In today's video, I will be showing you how to crochet an I cord. So this is a method to create a crocheted rope or a crocheted cord that you can add to many different projects in a number of different ways. For example, I've just used this technique to create a drawstring in my latest hood. Let's see if I can fit it all in frame. I definitely can't fit it all in the frame, but this is my latest design. This is my Kelly hood. Uh, I'll leave the link to the pattern down below, but I've gone ahead and used the eye cord as the drawstring here for the face ribbing so that you can cinch it uh, and it sits tight around your head. So to create this drawstring, I use the eye cord technique that I'm about to show you in this tutorial and the ends are left really nice and neat using this technique. And I just really enjoy how it looks like this because I think some crochet eye cords are worked a little bit differently than the one that I'm about to show you in this tutorial. And I definitely prefer my method best uh, because of the finished look of the eye cord. So to work the eye cord that I'm about to show you now in this video, you're obviously going to need a crochet hook that is corresponding to your yarn size. So I also have some yarn here. This is left over from this hood project. So you're going to need some yarn, a hook, uh, a darning needle for weaving in the ends, scissors, you know, for cutting your yarn, and you're also actually going to need two stitch markers. These are going to be very important as you work the length of your eye cord because you're going to have to put some stitches on hold as you work since the length of the eye cord can be a little bit tricky to predict. So you're going to have to put some stitches on hold as you work the eye cord. So these are very, very, very important as you work your cord. So make sure you have a set of stitch markers on hand before you start because you don't want to be trying to put stitches on hold without your stitch markers handy. So make sure you have those right next to you. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and told you what you need, showed you a possible application, and showed you the finished project, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to begin by creating a three chain I cord. You can actually make an I cord with as many chains as you'd like, but I believe that the three chain one is kind of the most typical one and gives you a pretty decent thickness for whatever size hook and yarn you're using. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So as I just mentioned, I'm going to make a three chain one. So I'm going to just chain three, just like this. So I've just worked three chains. Now, starting in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to go into the back bump of each chain and pick up a loop. So I'm going to go into the one and I'm going to go into the second one here, making sure I've caught the yarn. So this is what your work should look like so far. So I've just chained three and then I picked up loops in the uh, kind of like last two chains from the hook. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You're actually going to pinch the bottom of the two loops on the left here. So I'm going to pinch the bottom and I'm going to remove them from my hook. So try very carefully to not lose these hook loops. Sorry. Uh, you're going to leave those two loops off of your hook. And then you're going to yarn over with your tail end of yarn with the one loop that is on your hook and pull up. Now you're going to move on to the next loop. So the middle loop, you're just going to pick up the middle one, yarn over, pull through one, and then you're going to go through the last one into your hook, yarn over, pull through one. So you just work your first row of the I cord here. Uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit scary because you do have to drop those two loops or again, if you're doing uh, more than three chains, you would just drop all of the loops except for the furthest one from the tip of your hook. So for me, it's just these two. So that part is probably the scariest part of the I cord uh, and it takes some getting used to definitely while you're crocheting. But there's a few ways you can combat kind of losing these loops. First off is to pinch them at the very bottom. That's going to make it really hard for the loops to come undone. You would really have to tug against the force of your thumb and your middle finger here, pinching the bottom of those loops. So if you pinch them, you really should be uh, more than okay. But I also like to make these loops taller than I usually would. So I'm going to show you the next row and I'm going to show you that I actually draw up a loop. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through. So instead of leaving my loop this big, I actually pull it a little bit tighter or sorry, a little bit higher than I usually would. And that's going to give me some leeway so that if I do stretch it or pull out the yarn, it's not going to come undone immediately. So after I work that first one, I'm going to go into the middle loop while I'm still pinching those two yarn over, pull up a loop and again, pull up. 
And then into the last one, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So I've just worked another row of I cord. And that's really it. That's all you need to do. So you're going to drop the loops that are furthest from, uh, or sorry, that are closest to the tip of your hook, except for the last one. Then with your working yarn, you're going to yarn over, pull through, pull up a loop. And again, I recommend that you pull it up even a little bit higher than you usually would. Then I'm going to go into that middle loop. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it up all while I'm still pinching the bottoms of the previous loops. And then into the last one, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So there we go. I've worked a few rows of I cord now. And once you get the hang of it, you know, you can just keep going at whatever pace you'd like, working nice and slowly to make sure that you don't drop any of those loops. And you're just going to keep going for a little bit. So I'm going to work a few more rows of I cord off camera just to make my sample a little bit bigger here. And then I'll show you what to do because you're not going to be quite done yet once you keep working your rows. There's an additional step that you're going to have to do to really close your I cord and give it a kind of nicer finishing look. So again, I'm going to work a few more rows and I'll be back. All right, so I've worked a few more rows of my I cord. This is what it's looking like so far. And you might think that the loops look a little bit big or, you know, you might disagree with me in telling you to pull up uh, because it leaves your I cord with some kind of holes here as you work. But that's kind of on purpose because we're about to do something different that's going to tighten those loops. So don't worry. Again, if you have kind of these gaps in your I cord or you feel like your tension is uneven, we're about to do a step that's going to fix it. So your I cord is actually about to shrink at this moment because we're going to work uh, another row of loops. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But you're basically going to have to work your I cord longer than you think you would because the next step is going to shrink it. Or you can just do these two steps that I'm about to show you, uh, alternating until the I cord is at the desired length. So at this point, I'm going to take off these loops off of my hook and put them on a stitch marker. So I've just got a stitch marker here and I'm going to place my working loops in order from left to right on my stitch marker. All right, so I've got my working loops on a stitch marker and this is so that they don't come undone in case I pull or, you know, tug at the end of my yarn here. And I'm going to leave those there and I'm going to go to the bottom of my I cord. And as you can see, we've been working kind of three columns of these loops along the I cord. So that's what our three chains are here at the top. But now we're going to work a fourth one. So the fourth one is essentially created with the yarn that comes behind our I cord when we work the third loop. So, you know, you work the first loop, second loop, third loop. And then once we work the first loop again, this yarn is coming behind the three uh, loops that we've just worked. So it's actually leaving uh, a mark here at the back. So it's kind of hard to see here. But this horizontal bar here is the yarn that's being carried from the third loop to the first loop. And it's at every single row. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use that and create a chain. So just to begin working, I'm just going to insert my hook into one of the bottom chains here. It doesn't really matter which one. This is literally one of the very, very first chains that we worked. Like it's right next to the slip knot. It's probably even the first chain. I'm just going to insert my hook here. And... Under this first horizontal bar, I'm going to insert my hook underneath that horizontal bar, making sure I grab the yarn, and I'm just going to pull through the loop on my hook, just like that. So that's the first of my stitches for this column, this fourth column. Now I'm going to go up into the next horizontal bar here. I'm going to insert my hook underneath that loop, and I'm going to pull through. Now I'm going to move up again, find the next horizontal bar. And if it, you are having trouble finding the horizontal bar, just look at the edge stitches. So I can see this is an edge stitch and this is an edge stitch and see how they're connected. So I see that they're connected with this horizontal bar. So I'm going to insert my hook underneath that yarn over or sorry, really just pull through the loop on your hook. And once you work a few, it starts becoming easier to identify those horizontal bars. So again, if I open my work and look at the next one, I see that it's right there. 
as you work this column, your eye cord will kind of be closing in on itself, which is what we want, but it does make this step a little bit more difficult. So just make sure that if you're having trouble, just open up your stitches again to find that horizontal bar. And you're really just chaining with that horizontal bar. So you're not adding yarn to, or anything. You're just working with the yarn that's already there. And this is a step that a lot of people don't do in their eye cords. Uh, which is okay, but it just leaves a different look and I prefer this look of the eye cord that I'm doing because it really closes your eye cord at the back and doesn't leave kind of a weird gap. And as you can see, if you tug a little bit now, you can see that you have it fully closed. All four columns of your work are closed. There's no opening at the back. It's hard to even tell where we began or which column I'm currently working on right now. But also as you work, you'll feel your eye cord itself shrinking because we're pulling at the yarn that was here in excess. So we're pulling our stitches a little bit tighter. So that's why I said you will have to work your yarn or sorry, your eye cord longer than you would think. And you're just going to continue working this fourth column. Oops, I grabbed a little too much yarn there. You're just going to continue working this fourth column up the length of your entire eye cord, however long it may be until you reach almost the last row. So I'm not gonna work until this last row because it gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna stop a few stitches before and I'm gonna pull my hook out and into this loop of the fourth column, I'm also gonna place another stitch marker. So this is again, so it doesn't come undone. And you can see that this whole line of stitches was just created by chaining with that excess yarn and it's given us a very nice tight looking eye cord and again it doesn't look as holy anymore or with as many gaps as it did before we did this step so it's a very nice finishing step in my opinion so at this point you can go back to crocheting your eye cord as you normally were so you would just insert your hook into those top three working loops just like i just did put away the stitch marker and again, you would just repeat the same process, remove your hook from the furthest loops, or sorry, from the loops closest to the tip of the hook, and just proceed with the eye cord, just like that. And then, you know, after you'd worked a few rows, if you wanted to, if you weren't sure how long you wanted to make it, you would once again put these stitches on hold, put them on the stitch marker, and go back to this working loop and chain up the remainder of the stitches. So when I'm making eye cords, I'm not sure how long I want them to be. I usually make them quite long with this method. Then I put my stitches on hold, I turn back around, and I work up that fourth column, measure my eye cord. If it's long enough, perfect. If it's not long enough, I keep alternating between these two steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just catch up with this column of my stitches, uh, reach almost until the last, uh, row and I'll show you how we're going to finish off our eye cord now. All right, so I'm almost at the end here. I have just worked the last final stitches here of this fourth column of stitches. And if you look closely, you'll see that I still have this horizontal bar left to work into. So that one is from the previous row of my eye cord. So I actually am going to work into that stitch right there or into that loop. Oops, let me try that again. There we go. And as you can see, that just tugged my working loop, so it's a good thing that I had them on my stitch marker. And I actually am going to put the loops back on my hook in order from right to left. And then I'm going to remove the stitch marker. So now I should have all four loops on my hook. And at this point, once my eye cord is as long as I'd like, I like to give my eye cord a few tugs just to straighten it out and even out any kind of loose uh, loops on it. And once I get it a nice tug, don't worry, you know, you can give this quite a nice tug and nothing's going to happen. I'm going to cut a nice long tail end of yarn because I'm going to use this uh, tail end of yarn to finish off my eye cord. So with a darning needle, I'm just going to thread that tail end of yarn through. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it from right to left. So I'm going to first go into my rightmost loop and work my way through those all four loops. And I'm going to go right to left 
And once I've passed it through once, I can go ahead and remove the loops off of my hook. So that's the first pass. And I'm actually going to do that one more time. I'm gonna go from right to left. So I'm gonna go underneath the first loop, the second loop, third and fourth. Twice should be good. And then after that second one, I'm going to pull it nice and tightly. And then with the same tail end of yarn, I'm gonna try and go through the middle of my I cord and weave in my tail end of yarn literally into my I cord. So if you feel it, you can almost feel that it's hollow. So that's where my darning needle is going. So you can't even see it right now because it's, it's in my I cord right now. It's in between all four of those loops. And then I'm just going to pull my darning needle out, give that tail end a nice tug, and then give it my I cord a nice tug. And that's gonna give us with a nice clean finish here at the bottom of our I cord. And now we can just go ahead and cut this end of yarn. So I'm just going to pull it slightly and cut it just like that. And then with this tail end of yarn, we're going to do something similar. We're just going to weave this tail end of yarn into the chain across from the slip knot. So I'm just going to go into this chain here. I'll probably just weave my yarn under here once and then once more to form a knot and again just weave this tail end of yarn through the center of your I cord to finish it off and likely your I cord will be longer than mine is here so same thing give it a nice tug pull at the end and trim the yarn so here we have our cute little eye cord. This is what the two ends look like. They're finished off nice and flat. And because we did work that fourth column at the back of our eye cord here, it's nice and closed. Again, you can't tell which three uh, columns of stitches I was working and which one was the fourth one that we were working at the back of the eye cord. I also like that you can't even tell which side is up and which side is down thanks to the shape of the stitches. So overall this is my preferred way of crocheting eye cords. It is a bit finicky but I definitely think that it is worth the effort because I just think that they end up looking so so nice and they make a great addition to many different crochet projects. I hope this video was useful and please tag me if you use this technique. I would love to see your finished eye cords from this video tutorial. Have a lovely day, thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting!